Hey friends, I'm back. So it's been a bit since I filmed, but last week I did wind up going to Yalfest, which is a book fan convention that I've never actually been to. It was super fun. Um, for the first time that I went to a book event, I didn't go with any of my friends, but I met a bunch of people, which was super fun. And I really, really love that. So I'm going to try to link them below in the comments. One is Literary Hype Woman and she was just super fun. I'm actually in her vlog, so I didn't vlog because it was a crazy time and it was like a very, very busy 24 hours and I was flying and stuff like that but it was a super fun weekend and I'm just going to show you guys what I got and my overall experience of y'all fest um so I'm going to do the haul first and then we're going to chat about the experience and if I enjoyed it and if I think I will go back and all those fun things so yeah let's get into it so all the books I'm going to go over are books that I just got from drops and sort of if you've ever been to a con they have schedules and you wait in lines and most of these I waited in line for if I like got them another way I will tell you um so the first book I waited in line for was The Black Queen by Jumulant Elm this was part of the pajama party that I went to and they were talking about it but fans of One of Us and Lying and another, the other black girl your new obsession has arrived this comes out in January and I think it's about they have their first black home queen and then she's killed so that is like really crazy and insane um and i think that's what it is about so you have to have solve who killed this this black african african american prom queen um and i think they're in a mostly white community um so yeah that sounds interesting i'm curious to read this this is definitely like the best book out of that sack that i saw so i'm really hopeful that i enjoy it um and yeah it comes out in january um another one this was like the last thing that we did we went to a panel with her tj kuhn um britney smith and someone else so i got the book harvest house by cynthia lettish smith and this comes out in april i think and it is halloween is near and hugo wolf is volunteering at a new rural attraction harvest house and i think this has to do with like I think it was like reservations I think but it is set around Halloween so this would actually be a perfect book to read, to read right around now it also is a horror book and so I actually have to go prompt or something but yeah it just sounds great it has to do with a spooky house oh yeah and it's like I think it takes place on like Indian like on an Indian reservation that has a haunted house so that's really really cool I'm intrigued it gave me Stranger Things vibes when I was reading the summary and that's why I picked it up I was at the panel with my friend so we got it um the next two were like a bio book get a book so I bought two so I got I actually bought I'll show you in a minute um but I bought a book and I got Wild Blood by Laura Blackwood this is her newest book so I bought these wicked walls I'll probably show that in another haul but I got this arc it comes out in February um and this is just like this is more of a magical story set in a um I think it's like set in like a forest so yeah, and this comes out in February. This cover is so pretty. And these are like Atmosphere Caro, which is what I tend to like the most. So yeah, this is cover is pretty. And I also got Immortality by Diana Schwartz. It's actually funny because I picked up Anatomy at New York City Comic Con, but the, the arc didn't exist anymore. So I went to Y'all Fest and the Anatomy arc didn't exist, but I bought something to get this. So I have this arc and this comes out in February. So two February books. I have to read the other book both of these first books in the series or the companion books but yeah I'm super excited I also went to the new uh, the new event it was with Nicole Nicola and Dan and um Nicola Yoon and her husband um and they were giving away copies of Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbard and Queen Bee by Amelia Howard and I picked up this one just because I love Bridgerton and this says it's a, it's a diverse Regency romp. The Bridgerton meets the Count Monte Cristo from best-selling author Emily Howard. Oh, and this book came from Joy, Re Joy Revolution, which is run by the, the, um, the Yoons or owned by the Yoons. And I think this has to do, revenge is on her opening move, but love might be the end game. So this is really, really pretty. And I'm a big Bridgerton fan, so when I saw this, I had to get it. Um, and this was a panel we went to. We got to pick one out of the two. Um, and I also went to the... Teen, Penguin Teen Soiree and I got the Davenports um, by Crystal Marquez and this is first in a frothy page turning YA series set in the turn of the last, last, last century Chicago and featuring an all black main cast. I am probably going to do a reading vlog about these because they're both Bridgerton-esque and hopefully we get more information about Bridgerton soon so this might be a reading vlog coming your way in early 2023. Um... 
how did I get this? I think at the, the, the last penguin drop that they had, they were doing, um, like, buy, like, oh, I don't know if this is the last one or the second to last one that I had, but Simon & Schuster was doing a, like, you had to do six things to get a free arc, and this was the arc I got, and it's If I See You Again Tomorrow, and I think this is sort of like a Groundhog Day retelling, and I read Rachel Lynn Solomon's version of it and really, really enjoyed it, and this comes out in April. I think it's a contemporary. It's an LGBTQ+, and it has a Groundhog Day element. This drop was so hard because I wanted every single book on this table, but, um, so they had, um, this, this is from Underline, so the way the con worked, so the first half of the day was Penguin Teen Books, and then the second half of the day was Underline, so Underline had two drops, and the first drop was Silver and the Bone by Alexandra Brack and Luke, Lu Lucha and the Night, Royal Blood, um, and the new Abigail Hangwen book, and I wanted every single one of them. But you didn't get to pick. You just had to choose. You picked out of like a bag and whatever color you got, you got the book. So I got Lucha and the Night Forest by Taylor K. Mejia, which I'm super excited about. But and this comes out in March. It's a scorn guard, a mysterious accolade, a forgotten drug, and a dangerous forest. One girl caught between the freedom she's always wanted and a sister she can't bear to leave behind. I wanted every single book on that table. So I'm just happy I was able to get one. And I actually got it really luckily. One of the girls didn't want her ticket, so I got it. But I was not where it was supposed to be for that. So that's why this one was a bit of a struggle. But super excited. I'm going to be trying to read all those books on the table. Maybe try to do a reading blog. But yeah, so I'm super excited for this one. And thank you, Penguin Team, because it was fun. Actually, underline, because they, they're the one that was hosting that giveaway. Um, and then I got Forget Me Not by Allison Dittrich. This is the author that wrote She Gets the Girl. Um, and this is what would you do if you forgot the love of your life existed? Um, and I think this is like she had a terrible fall and she can't remember two years of her life. And she's trying to fall back in love with her, with her girlfriend, I think. So that sounds really, really interesting. She's the co-author of the acclaimed romantic bestseller. She gets the girl comes to tender solo debut that is choose a romantic ode to the strength of love, the power of choosing each other, and against odds, obstacles, and again and again. What would you do if you you forgot the love of your life ever existed? So, and this comes out in April. A perfectly cute contemporary. I'm really excited. I also did a couple of signings, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But she was signing and she was giving out her arc, so I got We Deserve Monuments by Macmillan. Macmillan was having a lot of issues with publishing the past couple of months, so their arcs just look a little bit weird. They're perfectly fine, though. Um, but yeah, so this one she signed for me, and I don't know what this one's about because it doesn't have anything on the back of it. Um... A small drama, a, swoon, a swoony romance, a slow burn mystery collides in this YA debut that explores how racial violence can ripple down through generations. Ooh, I love a slow burn mystery. So, and I don't know when this book comes out because the arcs are weird looking. Okay. Oh, it actually just came out. It comes out at the end of November. So, this one is one that I will definitely add to my TBR. I also got a really early copy of Stars and Smoke by Marie Lu. This one I looked it up online and it has to do with like a pop star. And like spying, which I am so intrigued by. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for this one. That's not what I thought this book was about. But it's like about spy and K-pop. I'm really intrigued. So I'm happy about this one as well. I also got Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Um, and this is two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection. They must face the depths of hell, a war among the gods, and their fates forever. So yeah, this is from Wednesday Books which just had better printing than all the Macmillan arcs. But I have read Rebecca Ross in the past and really hope I like this one. I also got the bind up of the two novellas, The Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong. Um, and this is 2.5 and I think this has a foul thing. I think it has a foul thing and what's the other novella it is? It's a foul murder. So these are two short novellas. It's not that long either. Um, I also got This Time is Real by Anna Lang. This is the only Scholastic book I picked up. And this has to do with K-pop again, I think. So, yeah. But this is a really, really cute, cute cover. And I also got 16 and Pregnant by Leia Temis, a novel. This was the book I got at the very, very end when they were giving away Last Violent Call. They had a couple of, like, their um, random picks, and I got this one as well. So yeah, those are all the physical books I picked up, which I think I did pretty good. We missed a few, we always do, but for the overall, it was a really, really fun 
book con, like book event, and now let's talk about the experience and if I would go again and how the event was structured because I always think that's fun, especially if you've never been able to go because some people haven't been able to go. Oh, one more thing. I got a little breakdown of The Inv Invocators by Crystal Sutherland. Um, and I got one more book. I got the Margaret Rogerston novella. It's just, I don't know where I put that one. But yeah, let's get into the experience and if, you, and if I think I would go again. So, I will tell you the cons I have been to in the past. I went to Bacon back in the day. Um, I have been to BEA and ALA. And I've also been to Comic Con. Um, and I've also gone to signings as well. And honestly, for me, signings probably hold the least weight. And that's just because I live in New York. So if there is an author that I desperately want to see, I live 40 minutes from the city, I can go see any author that I want over the course of a year. So author signings for me when I go to these big events are not always the focus. But I will tell you how the, it sort of broke down. So it's set in Charleston. Um, so they have um, a big, a big, they have somewhat of a small event space. Um, so the way that the event is broken down is you can do all signings and there is about, I would say about... 20 to 5 to 50 authors there and they have various signs where they sign the only thing i didn't like about it was so the the event is broken over two days and the first day they had mostly all signings and they had like two free events they had a front of like a fierce friday party and then they had um a signing event and the only thing i didn't like about that was that the two authors i really wanted to see on Friday because of some weather issues with Hurricane Nicole they were about 20 minutes away so I was unable to see those authors the whole time just because the next day I was super busy as I'm going to get to um I just wish that if they had to move the location they put it in the town of Charleston and not 20 minutes away um but that was the only downside and Friday honestly I was happy I got there early because I got to go meet I met Cinder Williams Chima that May I went Adeline Grace I'm so upset that I left Belladonna at home so I got all the ties and fate signs again by her I got some really really pretty art um and then I did that and then I went to the fierce Friday party which wasn't really a party um and there was just author signing um and again I think it was a little bit mismarketed because they said that we would get arts I mean I got one or arcs but, but we just didn't so a little bit of mismarketing for that but it was a really really fun day and then the second day was Sunday so the way Sunday broken down you could either go for all your arc drops and Penguin was there um Simon and Schuster was there Fierce Reads was there I Read YA was there and Epic was there but I, Epic was like on the other side of the building so I didn't really go where Epic was because they really were only doing a couple of arc drops and they were so far away um, so we got there, I got there at like 7 a.m. to get in line, and I knew right off the bat I was going to try to get my Fierce Read tickets because they had Stars and Smoke and they had Divine Rivals, and I knew that those are the books I really, really wanted, so if I got nothing else, I was okay. Um, so the way the events broke down, they have signings that they have all day, they have panels that the author signing are, and then they just have random arc drops. So I was very interested in the arc drops because I know how much I read every single year. But you really have three types of people at this event. The people that go for the arc drops, the people that go for the signings, and the people that go for the panels. Those panels and signings are just not what I'm interested for, but I have done it in the past. Like I do it at New York City Comic Con all the time just because they're a little bit easier. But this event I was mostly there for the arcs. And I thought that it was very, very well organized. Like I think that if you go in and don't know how to play the game, I think you'll definitely get a lot less books. And I think you just have to really read their schedules and just be respectful. Um, so for me, I had a really, really fun time. I went in with no expectations and I, again, had a lot of fun. I got like a nice range of books and I think I just picked up stuff that was fun. I think it was most fun was because I was with new people that I like. Like I met a couple of friends and we, you know, we went to the, like the Smackdown event. We got dinner. We went to a panel together and it was fun. Did I get to do everything? No. But that's okay. I think I went to a lot of events. There was a, a lot of fun events too. They had a pop-up for um, this violent, these violent, um, this violent call for Chloe Gong, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, they had like the Penguin Teen Soiree, which you got to choose one of three books, Davenport's Chaos and Flame and Nightbirds, which I definitely recommend Nightbirds. That's a book that I've read recently and really, really loved it. I got that at, at Comic-Con. Um, and then they had the Joy Revolution panel, which with the noon husband and wife duo, and they were talking about their books, which I thought was really, really cool. They also had a, um, 
a source books panel I think as well and then they had Inkyard Press had bingo and those were just very very popular so I didn't wind up doing those but I would definitely go back I really liked it and I think as someone that went to comic-con and really came out with a good amount of books there was some crossover um, and I got a couple of things twice, like I got the Headmaster list twice, and I got Chaos and Flame twice, and I just wanted to give that to someone I was online with because I didn't need two copies. I probably should have saved it for my students, but I didn't think of them. Shh, don't tell them. Um, but yeah, I had a really, really fun time, and I would definitely go back and do it again. I'm probably planning on going back next year, especially if my new friends are going to go. But yeah, that is my experience. If you guys have any more specific questions about Yalfas and how it compares, please let me know, and I will try to let you guys know in the comments. And I will talk to you guys for my next video. Bye, friends.